What's up YouTube, it's Louis here bringing you today's cryptocurrency video. We're going to be taking a look at Faro, but before we get into the video, make sure you like, subscribe, comment and turn the notification bell on. Let's get into it. So obviously as you know, we had this massive rising wedge with a target down here at the bottom of the wedge at this area basically because it's not a single location because where the bodies are the wicks so that's around seven dollars to six dollars 85 which we had a nice bounce from a uh, bounce off we went down a little bit lower but i gave you that target anyway out of this fibonacci retracement which is over here and you met your 2.272 you overshot it a bit and now we're back above it and we're working our way back up and i always tell you guys that once you meet your 2.272 well you don't even have to meet the 2.272 if you get back above the 1618 and confirm that as support which we are doing right now so that's very positive if we want the dip to be done we need to get back above the one which i gave you in yesterday's video and that level was seven dollars 26 we're, which we're currently above right now so I'm just going to drag this a bit for more. I'm going to take away the uh, Fibonacci now. I'm going to go into the one hour. So obviously, I told you that Fire has these gaps. I don't know why it has these gaps, but like, for example, this red candle should have opened here, but opened way up there. So I literally can't give you a reason for that, but I can still gauge the patterns. So right here, we have this resistance. So I'm actually going to draw it with a line. So this resistance is at $7.40. Once we break the $7.40, and we need Bitcoin to behave, guys, because Bitcoin's having a nice rally up now. Uh, right now. I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, we need uh, Bitcoin to stabilize, because if not, then our, uh, it's going to carry on going down, and I'll give you further down targets. So we'll do that in this video. So right now, I'm seeing this double bottom or ascending triangle, whatever you want to call it. And we have a new uh, target uh, right here at $7.85. So I'm going to put that in right now. Let me get the fibs back up for you. So remember yesterday I said we want, if we want to get up to $8.30, we need to work our way through the fibs, get above $7.26, get to the one. Once you have the one, we may pull back maybe to this uh, double bottoms neckline before continuing breaking that one at $7.64 and heading to $8.30 basically, which is at the 1618. And look at this for confluence, this double bottom, which has taken us above the one. So that's all good for now. When we get a bit higher, actually, I'll just do it now. So let's go from the start of the Evergrande dip. So that happened right here. And we need to work our way through these fibs as well. So look at that for confluence. With this um, double bottom, if we break out, takes us to 7.85, which is this very key level of support at $7.74. Look at that bounce. This is the target that I gave you if we ever lost $8.20, which I actually gave you in my first ever fire update, which we were up here. I said, if we do, um, we're going to, from here, because it was pumped so hard, I said, we're going to come down, because this is what fire likes doing. It has loads of fat scam wicks. Look, can you see Massive wick to dance, massive pump, massive uh, dump, massive pump, massive dump. It, it loves doing this fire because it's a very small coin because it's like a micro cap basically. And I told you guys that we're going to come back to the swing high at $8.20, which we've been holding like a boss. And then we formed this descending triangle and we broke to the bottom, uh, uh, to the downside. But before we even broke to the downside, I said, if we ever lose 820, this will be a perfect area of here. The swing high at $7.70. And look at that for the bounce. Got back up. Obviously, the more you test 820, the weaker it gets. And so the Evergrande is what pushed it over, basically pushed it over and then you met your technical target which i also gave you at around seven dollars to 685 so now we have the 618 at eight dollars 12 and um, we know that our 1618 out of this fibonacci uh, just just from here to here uh, the 1618 is here and that takes us above that 618 at eight dollars 12 so which is that eight dollars 20 area eight dollars 10 to eight dollars 20 area so this is the level that we must get above and that 1618 is telling us that we will get back above there as long as we stay above seven dollars 26 so as long as you're above seven dollars 26 we're going to go to eight dollars 31 and looking at this new fibonacci uh retracement the 618 is here so obviously this tool is something like this where you pull back to this and continue however if you break the 618 comes a reversal tool like this and then we'd have new targets to the upside so if we can get above eight dollars twenty then get to the one at nine dollars eighteen and so if we can hold that support we'll head to the one six one eight at eleven dollars look at that guys and where is eleven dollars where is that one six one eight literally the top over here this local high that we set back in october beautiful isn't it because everything's like lining up as confluence we're just working our way back above the, the EMA. So I'm going to zoom in now for you guys to see if there's anything else on the chart. If not, that's it. 
but let's have let's take a look so oh yeah i was going to say that we need to look at bitcoin and we need to see if that if we do get rejected here if, if bitcoin starts dumping again because bitcoin broke below and so did Fire. um basically all of the alts yesterday did the bullish cross on the one out apart from bitcoin i was i was feeling very sus about that because Bitcoin's the leader. Bitcoin is the mothership. The charts will do what Bitcoin wants. And all of them, now Bitcoin started pumping a little bit. It got back above the EMAs. And when it did, all of the alts just started going parab well, not parabolic, but yeah, they were doing much better than Bitcoin because obviously they're more volatile. They go up more, they go down more. So obviously they went up more. And when they did go up, they all formed the bullish cross. You can check every alt, they all formed the bullish cross on the one out, apart from Bitcoin. And uh, if it does not do the bullish cross and you fall back below the EMAs, this is called an EMA repel, and I'll show you this right now. So can you see here, Bitcoin did not form the bullish cross when we got above, but every single altcoin did. And so this is what can, can uh, lead to an EMA repel, basically. Oh, look at that exactly. Hit my alert. Just hit this technical target out of this uh, inverted head and shoulders over here. He did the double bottom over here basically. You lost this swing high, you come to this swing low, bounce off it, break the swing high, now maybe meet this target before uh, coming down to this basically. So I'll basically see you guys at 60, 60k where the 200 EMA is. So yeah, Bitcoin didn't do the uh, bullish cross and so we had the EMA repel where they do not cross over. Let me remove the charts. So can you see they didn't cross over? So that leads to a, a pump to the downside. But if Bitcoin can find support, which it did at this swing low over here, and get back above these EMAs and confirm them as support, then obviously that's done and we're going to confirm this uptrend. So did we just get two fake outs basically, potentially, potentially. And this is what I called in on my Twitter today, earlier today. So make sure you're following my Twitter, at Louis underscore crypto. Let me find that for you. Yeah, here. So that's the EMA repel. That's what, what happens when you get EMA repel. But as long as you find key level support, we're going to head back up. So going back to Fyro. So if Bitcoin does not behave, loses the EMAs, confirms them as resistance, hits its head on resistance, then we're going to have new targets to the downside. So first of all, when we're using the fibs, it always should bounce off the 618. And look at that for some confluence. This is Fyro, so it may not have done it on Bitcoin, but look at that for confluence. You bounce off the 618, and so that means that this dip should be over. If you lose the 618, you're creating something called a reverse wave. And what that means is that you're potentially going to come to the one at $6.68 and maybe form a double bottom in. That is only going to happen if you lose $6.95. If you don't lose that, basically, if we can break above the zero at $7.40, we're good. We're going. We're, we're off, basically clear but if you lose this then obviously we're coming to the one maybe the double bottom but if you do lose six dollars 68 i'm always going to give you both scenarios if you do lose six dollars 68 look at that uh for confluence look where the one two seven two is at a psychological level six dollars fifty and your worst case scenario down here but again if bitcoin behaves confirms the emas of support you're not going to see that at all because this is what you want with the fibonacci's anyway you want that bounce off of here but again if you break below the 618, create a reversal wave. Perfect, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's update. Like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell on. Follow me on Twitter. Let's get to 300. I'm almost at 500 followers, which is my end of year target. Let's get there before the end of the year. Share this with everyone. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.